Welcome back in today's sex study news. Who falls asleep faster after sex? Our I-24 sexologist, Dr. Lee Moore Blockman, here with more on uh, this study and, and some others. All right. <laughs> what? Uh, that is the age-old question. Yeah, I know. And we always believe, we always hear all these assumptions and men fall asleep after sex and all these, you know, stories that we tell ourselves. Yeah. So the researchers actually took interest and they gathered uh, over 100, over 400 people and asked them about their sleeping habits and about their sexual habits mm -hmm. to see what's going on there and you know uh, what they found is that um, is that well, a few things they found uh, but they asked them who falls asleep after sex and how do you feel about it does, how does it make you feel mm -hmm. what kind of actions do you take and they found this, uh, something that was uh, very interesting that men and women are equally falling asleep after sex so it was an old wives tale old wives tale, old wives like, tale. Oh. it has nothing to do with it but they did find that women fall asleep on a non-sex night much quicker, which is right. very interesting. That's very interesting. Very what interesting. Did they, what did they allude what did to? They, why is that, right? Mm -hmm. So they found that the actually the, the person that stays that the person that stays up, and that is a, a very interesting thing in terms of men. The person that stays up is much more interesting in cuddling, in chatting, in enchanting. Which is things. why I think the myth started that men fall asleep because then they don't want to talk. Right, after, right. right. <laughs> so the person that stays up is interested in talking, in cuddling, in, in you know just exchanging experience. And that is something that has to do with the release of oxytocin. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we relate to either women or men in, in terms of this study. And what they found is that men actually stay up for evolutionary reasons because they assume subconsciously that their wives are going to fall, you know, run off with someone that will give them really? sperm competition. Yes. <laughs> That is a very that is interesting. so interesting. I'm thinking yes. they have to stay up because back in the day they have to like keep watch and keep everyone safe from, no, well, from yeah. uh, intruders or exactly. intruders is exactly that. <laughs> but on a, on a different <laughs> note of intruder. Yeah. So despite the common stereotype, we see that you know it's not something that relates specifically to men, and our relation was specifically to oxytocin. Right. So they went ahead and they said, okay, so if the release of oxytocin is what moves us, what if we inject oxytocin? to men and see what's going on. So they gathered another 40 men and they gave them artificially oxytocin v via nasal spray and on the same, on a, on a different uh, level, they gave them placebo to see if there's some form of an effect. And what they did uh, to examine it is they, they, they screened uh, pictures of their loved ones, of their partners or wives in front of them after giving, after administering this, uh, the oxytocin. On, uh, and separately they showed them pictures of women that they know but they're not involved with. What do you think? You read the study. Wasn't it surprising? Very, uh, totally surprising. And also now, this cuddling and bonding habits. So a similar theme. Another Is that another study or this is it's, all related to the same study that the cuddling is really, you know, this is what women crave also. Right. right? I mean, we want to have the, the feeling of intimacy, not that we're just... Right, absolutely, act, right? absolutely. Well, what was interesting is that the administration was to men, and what they found is that if men are, are administered oxytocin, they find their wives much more attractive, the monogamy is enhanced. Really? And not, so we can just sneak it into their drink. Absolutely. That would <laughs> They don't find it's the women. Magic pill. Absolutely, they don't find the women that they just acquainted with that interesting right. or that you know sexy. On that note, so it's a very interesting thing that you can actually take into account and Ooh, utilize. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. you. Good stuff. All right, and uh, we all know the retro Rubik's cubes from the '80s continues to challenge teens today. This weekend was the World's Rubik's Cube Championship in Paris, where a number of world record speed times were smashed. More from I-24's Loti Bielin. It's been over four decades since Erno Rubik created his best-selling toy cube, yet it continues to draw thousands to competitions all over the world. Some 1,100 competitors from 70 countries join the speed cubing event with contests such as cracking the puzzle with one hand or wearing a blindfold. But one of the coolest things is that speed cubing is almost like the Olympics, where you have many, many different events. You can see people solving with their feet, solving one-handed, solving blindfolded. I think the coolest event yet created is the multiple blindfold, um, where people literally sit in a room for an hour and they solve up to 40-some Rubik's cubes in a row without ever taking a blindfold off. Challenging for some, over the years, enthusiasts have found thousands of ways to solve the puzzle. The cube is an example for something that is uh, not enough to hear about. It. It's not enough to see it, 
but it's important to keep it, to try it, and to work with it. So that's, that's many, the uh, same thing, uh, many things are the same, like love. To these competitors, a fraction of a second could mean a new world record or spell doom in their quest to be named the fastest Cuba in the world. <laughs> Canada, Canada's Justin Trudeau continues to be a cool dude. Last month, the Prime Minister wore noteworthy socks when he met with a sock enthusiast, Ireland's Prime Minister. Now Trudeau shares on Twitter that his summer music playlist includes Drake, R.E.M., Katie Lang, and Fiona Apple. Quite an eclectic mix. He unveiled his Prime Minister mix of 39 songs on Spotify. And former U.S. President Barack Obama also released his summer faves on Spotify back in uh, 2015. A South Korean grandmother has become a YouTube sensation. 70-year-old Park Makrai loves doing makeup. Wow, look at this. Her granddaughter has been filming her granny and has released the makeup videos on YouTube. And in less than six months, the videos have become so popular that they've gone viral with nearly 275,000 subscribers on YouTube and over 100,000 followers on Instagram. Mac Rye's granddaughter says dementia runs in their family and she posted these videos to preserve her grandma's memory should she contract dementia. And how can we heal our body, mind, and soul by hitting you in your gut? Don Masterseri, your Denny is returning to uh, do a, draw, draw, a jaw-dropping healing session on me. And a local girl band is making inroads on the Israeli music scene live with a performance, but first the news.